okay so let's try to make this session a bit interactive by asking the question and ask answering all to my questions so let's start with, let's start with session with the main focus on this technology which we are continuously working on you know the time i believe three or four decades ago where we have traditional databases and somehow we came to know that the data which is being stored is much precious and can be useful in bringing out the insights from them we thought that we need to do something else rather than storing the data into the database which is a traditional database what we thought let's do something unique so uh, we came out from from the traditional databases we tried to make some other databases uh, which is which is known to be dvms where do, where we manage the data we process the data we transform the data and thus we use a number of databases as well where we have the structured data in the form of table you know we have a number of fields which is known to be the column name uh, then we try to define some constraint over there but the time we worked on the technology we came to know yes the data is still more useful and we need to get some more insights from the data and it's not easy to get the data from the data which is being stored in our databases actually we need to process the data in the streaming form so we came to know that yes we need to process the data in the streaming form and thus we introduce a number of platforms to work on so hi everyone welcome to this knowledge session i am kuldeepak gupta software consultant and in this knowledge session we will we, we will learn about some data streaming frameworks what are they what are their uses what is the problem statement and at last we will be discovering all the all their use cases so before starting the knowledge session there are some etiquettes as well starting from the punctuality try to join the knowledge session of uh, before 5 minutes of the session mute yourself until and unless you do have any question yes if you do have any question ask me any time i will try to answer you and after after you get your answer please try to avoid the disturbance by muting yourself and at last which is the most important thing uh, your feedback which is really helpful for us in our in making our sessions more interactive and more improve fun so let's try to discuss the agenda first first one will be the problem statements means what actually is the problem statement why we are facing such problems then the solution to our problem is how can we solve our problem in order to get a better insights into the data then we will compare some data streaming frameworks since there is a list of data stream frameworks and they cannot be uncovered into a single i believe a number of sessions so we will compare some of them and at last definitely we are going to discussing their use cases because if you have a number of things to work on then it's pretty hard sometimes it's pretty hard to choose what data type or what data frameworks do we need to work on so yes at last we will be discussing their use cases as well so let's start what is the problem statement so let's think what actually is the data what is its form and from where it may comes from so i really appreciate if any of you can answer means what is data any type of data you can explain i appreciate anyone if you can speak am i audible yes kuldeep okay so let me speak data is something which is a very helpful for you and it may be in any of the form which you can think it may be text it may be audio it may be video it may be a pdf or anything and the main thing is from where it may come from it may be come from any of the resources it may be your server log files it may be a crm data means customer so management and then it may be iot sensors maybe medical sensors it may be medical results or any of the data even you know you uses a number of devices in your daily routine which produces a data and the fact is the data is growing exponentially where the amount of data is growing exponentially you need to think that every bit of data holds a value even let me tell you according to some reports the number of bytes being generated and stored till now in the world has already exceeded the star count in the sky that means the data is growing very exponentially that means if we can't think how to deal with the data how to store how to transform how to perform the query as well on the data it's going to be hard to get the insights of the data since the data is growing exponentially 
but as the as every bit of the data is very useful so let me tell you it's very important to store them without losing any of the bit let's think the first thought of data strikes in your mind you might be thinking that the piles of data residing in data warehouse or somewhere in the databases this is the common fact which everyone can think think means like if the data is being produced that means it is being stored in somewhere it may be your databases it may be your warehouses it may be your data lakes as well you know there are a number of places where you can store your data and such data can be extracted out you can process them you can analyze you can just perform all those operation to get some future predictions and insights for any of your use but this all can be done only and only when the data is in a resting state in other words let me tell you data is resting somewhere and when you need to process it you run some queries or some jobs some operations against such data but it doesn't rely that the data must be in resting state all the time and only you can perform operations on the data because it's not easy that you can just perform you can extract out all the data from the databases and you can perform some uh, operations it may be etl or it may be elt and just get some insights from the data it might possible that the data is not in resting state i mean to say that it might possible sometimes that you don't need to wait the data to get somewhere stored in the data warehouses in the databases rather than what do you have to do you have to perform your queries your jobs your operations in the stream of the data means you can't wait the data to pile up somewhere else in any of the places and you just train your query what you have to do you have to perform all your operations you have to analyze you have to perform you have to enrich you have to transform the data before it get stored because not all the business operations can be solved by storing the data and then analyzing them as i think i believe that you all are cognizant of the fact that one size cannot fit all so you need to deal with the processing data in the real real time means you have to analyze the data in the real time so this was all the problem which you need to think out now what is the solution so solution starts from means you know you have a number of platforms to work on you have a number of frameworks to work on they they may be free of cost or you have to pay for them so there are a number of frameworks which you can use to analyze the real time data so in this session we will discover only and only three which first one is apache kafka second one is stream and third one is apache spark but before proceeding to the next slide let me give a brief introduction of all the frameworks which you may use to analyze the real time framework so one of them is apache storm uh, when you ask about the apache storm it's a free and open source distributed real time computation system because it doesn't matter you have to pay every time you are when you are working with the real time data there are a number of open source as well where you can perform all your operations for free so one of them is definitely apache apache storm and it's really easy to reliably process bounded streams of data if you are asking for the use cases means uh, is there any particular use case when you can use the apache storm yes it is really useful for real time analysis online machine learning which actually you know is a very popular thing everyone can ask for in the real time if in the real scenarios yes one of them is machine learning and etc also a fact about the apache storm is it is a benchmark clocked it at a over a million tuples processed per second per node which actually is a milestone itself means you can perform a million of tuple per second per node that is very 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 much if you are asking for the real time analysis of course it's an fault tolerant and scalable so this is all about something the apache storm now next one is apache zamza if you are asking for the apache zamza again apache zamza is an open source near real time asynchronous computational framework which you can use for streaming processing definitely it's being developed by apache as the name name suggest 
the process means the reason behind the apache sms is being developed because it is developed in the, in the conjugation with apache kafka which uh, in a very short we are going to discussing about apache kafka also it is used to develop the develop the stateful application state process in real time from multiple sources including the apache kafka as i told you that it is being developed in conjugation with apache kafka so you can just use it or to build the stateful applications this is all about us a short description about the apache samson next one is apache flink apache flink is one of the most popular framework which is being used for data processing now at days so let's uncover some analytics about the apache flink again apache flink is an open source unified streaming processing and batch processing i'm just repeating my words it's an unified stream processing and batch processing frameworks a distributed processing engine for stateful computation somewhat feels like what actually it means means you can it use it for stream processing as well as the batch processing it means it's very popular for this reason nowadays it has been designed to run in all the common cluster environment you know these are some features which make apache flink a bit differ from all the frameworks which you can use and one of them is that you can use in all common cluster environment it performs computation at in memory space and at any of the scale which you can work on it offers already built in source and sync connector with apache kafka amazon kinesis which we are going to learning about in a very short hdf hdfs of course hadoop hdfs apache cassandra and much more which you can't even think so this is all about the amazon uh, apache flink next one is amazon kinesis as i told you that some of the framework are free of cost but for some of them you have to pay some amount to work on and one of them is amazon kinesis i believe that most of you have been known something about the amazon kinesis it's a data stream framework which you can use to collect and process large streams of data records in real time means amazon has its own databases data warehouses and you need to analyze some data means before analyzing you need to collect the data you need to enrich the data you need to process the data and the and there could be a large streams of data in real time so you can use amazon kinesis for the same kinesis data stream applications are some applications which are very helpful in, in such cases and these applications are the applications applications which actually is the data processing applications means you can use this application to just process all the data which reads the data from data stream as data records and it makes it easy to collect process analyze the data in real time thus what actually it helps it helps you to get the insights into the data which actually is the most powerful thing you need to learn on even if you talk about the learning machine learning you when you talk about deep learning it is only possible when you have the data in yourself means you have the data with yourself in proper format as you required out so before doing all those stuffs you need to have the data in the proper format you have to enrich your data so these are some platforms these are some frameworks which you can use and one of them referent last one is the pubsub pubsub is from google so it's known to be a google pubsub as well which allows service to communicate asynchronously also with the latencies on the order of 100 millisecond which again a milestone in itself it is used to for stream analytics and data integration pipeline to ingest and distribute it the data there is something which uh, these are some words which i need to again repeat on means it is very useful for stream analytics and data integration pipeline to ingest and distribute the data because it's not possible to store data at one place you need to store the data at multiple places which is known to be the replica as well so you can use pubsub again as the name suggests pubsub you you have to create systems of event producer producer and consumer means i believe everyone knows about the pubsub which is the publisher and subscriber so these are some frameworks which you can use alternatively but again as i told you that one size does not fit all 
so it depends only and only on the scenario means which one to use which one not to use so these are all about the apache storm apache sams apache flink amazon kinesis and pub sub now let's briefly discuss three of them first one is apache stream when you talk about the apache free uh, sorry akka stream akka stream is a library to process and transfer the sequence of data before proceeding a uh, much about the akka stream let me tell you akka stream is one of the uh, is of the akka frameworks which is very 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 popular feature of scala when it comes to the fault tolerance when it comes to the scalability when it comes to distributed programming akka is very popular for all and akka stream is one of them so uh, a custom is one of the most powerful feature of the Scala. It comes with a number of libraries and modules as well for different purposes. Again, here the size, you know, when it comes to the streaming of data, it may possible that you cognizant of the size. You may not cognizant of the size, it means you doesn't know what is the size of data. So for the case of a custom, the size may not or may not be known. It doesn't matter for a stream because it, imp it implements the use of reactive streams interface internally to pass the data between different operators. Occur reactive and I, if I'm talking about the occur reactive, let me tell you, it is an initiative to provide a standard for asynchronous stream processing with non-blocking back, back pressure. It may be some complicated keywords for now because when the time you learn about it's somehow a bit complete but the time you work on a custom you will came to know yes it is one of the best powerful feature of a custom when it comes to the reactive implementation the feature that makes the custom more popular is that you have entire control over the processing of individual records and stream topologies means the feature is independent of the amount of data being processed and also the configurations means you don't need to worry about the records you don't need to worry about the stream technology topologies you just have to process your data in any order you can you want even you don't need to worry about what is the size of data it is built on the top of actor model as i told you the akka is one of the most powerful feature of scala so you are very enriched in the case when it comes to the concurrency and streaming components that are built that can help in processing the data the any way you want i'm again repeating some words because these are something which make it differ from the all the ones so you can process the data in any form you want so this is something about the custom now what is the degree of a custom means what is the feature of a custom making it different from all other framing frameworks <clears throat> one of them is it is highly scalable and fault tolerance as i told you as i discussed a bit earlier that it is built on the top of akka which is known to be for the concurrency for tolerance so definitely the one of them the degree of akka stream it is that it is highly scalable at fault tolerance it follows the reactive manifest manifesto that is there are four uh, the there are four pillars of the reactor manifesto on which you can talk about one of them is elasticity then responsiveness means the time in the time you took actually to respond back to the console back to the user is the is your responsiveness fault tolerance means your system even should be responsive even even if your program fails if even if your program crashes you need to respond so this is one of the feature and again the message driven behavior which actually is one of the most beautiful feature of the reactive manifesto then api is extremely powerful you don't need to worry about the data the type of data the size of data you don't need to worry about it also it offers a low level graph stage api that enhance it to get all the control for custom streaming logic means somehow somehow uh, if you have worked on the streaming framework you came to know that there are some constraints with the library means you have to implement the same logic or you have to implement this logic in order to get stream the data but when it comes to the custom you, you can have your own custom streaming logic so this is all about the akka stream the degree of akka stream now second one apache kafka i believe it is a bit popular in the market now 
since it is very 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 friendly with java as well as well as scala so kafka streams also known to be kafka apache kafka stream is a client library for building applications and microservices and unbounded data we here actually we interact with the cluster to process a stream of data it combines the simplicity and writing deploying standard java and scala applications on the client sides with the benefits of server side cluster technology actually these are all the things which lets you to think that whether why we are going to any other framework if we have kafka because you know you may integrate the scala code and java code as well for the kafka and the main benefit is that you you have server side cluster technology as well you don't need to worry about it also you have clusters to interact with to process the stream of data that makes it a bit inter interesting to work on the reason behind choosing kafka over the other streaming platform is its integration with kafka security which is you know when when if you are talking about the data you need to talk about the safety of the data and talk about the security of data so you have the kafka security as well in in so which you can integrate your streams deployment to containers virtual machines and cloud means in simple word if i talk about something that you don't need any separate processing cluster when you when it comes to the apache kafka so this is something which is a bit interesting uh, description about the apache kafka and also data is represented as a key value records in the apache kafka so when it comes to the degree of apache kafka it comes with the apache oh sorry apache kafka cluster that provides high speed fault tolerance and high scalability high scalability also it provides exactly one message se sending semantics which actually allows you to make your system more fault tolerance and highly scalable it also encourages us to make the use of microservices since it is very helpful when it comes to microservices you can easily integrate the apache kafka over there also the one of the most interesting feature is that you use the same message bus to communicate means you can acknowledge any time the sender or the receiver that the message has been sent or the message has been received because you are using the same message bus to communicate <coughs> sorry so this is all about the apache kafka third one which actually i need to say the giant when it comes to the real time processing when it comes to the streaming data is apache spark so apache spark which is also known to be the spark streaming it is a scalable fault tolerant stream processing system that natively supports both batch and streaming workloads as i i believe uh, i've already told you there are some frameworks which allows you to work with the stream frameworks streaming data as well as the batch processing data and apache spark spark is definitely one of them it is a natural streaming extension of massively popular spark distributed computing engine with the main purpose to use the process endless big data at a scale means the main purpose you gonna use the apache spark is you have to process the endless big data at a scale means you know when you have the data in a huge form and you need to process the data then the best option could be the apache spark the point to remember and to be noted is that it will need a dedicated computer cluster to run on because overall you are processing a huge amount of data it may be in the stream data it may be a batch process data so you may need a dedicated cluster to or i don't need to say you may you should need a dedicated computer cluster to run which could usually be costly definitely if you are using some system then it could could be some costly for in the production but yes it could be a better option if you have data and you you in huge amount means at a big scale big scale the abstraction key of the spark streaming is a decentralized stream or 
in short a d stream that represent a stream of data divided into small batches and this is the reason it could process the batch data as well these streams are built on the top of rdd spark score data abstraction this allows spark streaming to seamlessly integrate with any other spark components so uh, if i'm talking about the spark components then it could be spark sql it could be mlib as well so this is something the apache sparks talk about means when you have the data at huge scale and you are just processing the data it may be in any of the form it, it may be a batch process data it may be stream data so the best option which you can adopt is you can have the apache spark for yourself so let's think the degree of the apache spark yes it is mainly built for the big data but the most feature of the Scala is the ability to deal with late data based on event time and watermarks, which is powerful in real time. Means when it comes to the Apache Spark, you can deal with the late data as well, which is actually which is based on the event time. Means it doesn't mean the data is coming and coming and just processing it. And sometimes it, the data is, can be based on the event time and watermarks as well. So sparks give you gives you the ability to deal with the data as well which actually makes it much more popular and is one of the most powerful feature of the apache spark as well and and you know in real time it's very powerful then it also can be quickly spun upon locally for a small data processing as i told you that, that it never worries about that size of the data so you can use the Spaches, apache spark for the data where you don't where you don't know about the size means that your data is at big scale or it might possible that your data is smaller in size means smaller data processing you you can use apache spark at any time okay again when it comes to the apache spark there is an, another option which is the fast recovery from failures and stragglers means even if your system fails even if your system suffers from any of the fault tolerance fault then you don't need to worry about it actually it allows you to have some fast recovery from all those failures and stragglers so till now uh, let me tell you again till now we have uncovered all the descriptions means all the short descriptions about some streaming frameworks it may be apache kafka it may be a streams it may be apache spark it may be apache storm it may be zamza fling can i says pops up one point that needs to be noted is these are not only the frameworks there are still a number of frameworks there are still a number of platforms that can be used for real-time analysis for analyzing the stream data there is a list but i am just choosing some of them it might possible that there is some other as well so anytime you can ask me about any of the streaming platform i will try to answer you but these are some common one definitely some of them could be free open source but for some of them you have to pay so these are some of them so let's discuss the use cases it means if you have some streaming frameworks then which one to use because you know when you have a number of things to work on and you they give some features as well they have some pros and they have some cons as well so it might possible you need to worry about means where and when to use me if i have batch processing data then what to use if you are asking for batch processing then what to use then if you are asking for complexity if you are asking for the size of data you are asking for the type of data you need to worry about the transaction processing if you're asking for means uh, what type of platform where can we use it and machine uh, when it comes to latest technology and popular technologies and one of them is machine learning or it may be deep learning then what kind of framework you should need to worry about you can use over there so that you can just go through them and just yes you can find it this is the one which we can use for our technology this is the one which is very suitable for our data so you need to think again that what type of data framework actually you use 
because again there is a list of frameworks which you can use over there and you need to find out you need to think that which type of framework you need which actually meets your requirements which actually makes you cost effective as well because you know when it comes to um, perform any of the operation once one thing which you need to learn is that you also need to think about some pillars. One of them is safety. One of them is security. And one of them is definitely your cost. Because uh, when you're asking for the data, data is continuously streaming and being generated from a number of platforms, from a number of frameworks, from a number of devices as well. And before the real time data gets stored, any of the places it's being just traveled from a network at a point at a time of point as well so you need to worry about how you can safely save, uh, save your data store your data so that after a time you have to use that data for getting the insights into your data definitely uh, one of the best use cases to get insight uh, insights into the data is that uh, getting the future predictions so let's discuss one of them so when it comes to the clustering the use cases which you can worry about means when you have complex stream event processing then you need to think a clustering means when you you are just implementing some of the program that is complex event stream processing means if you are thinking that your yes your streaming is getting a bit complex your event stream is getting complex than the expected one you can definitely adopt the clustering for the same a custom, uh, I believe that every Scala developer who is working on Scala or actually I need to say a backend developer needs or knows actually that a custom is very helpful when it comes to the backend services means you can integrate anytime and very easily the custom in your backend services because a custom is built on the top of Akka and definitely I told you that Akka is built on the top of Scala, which is known to be for its concurrency, for its parallelism, for its, uh, you know, fault tolerance, for its scalability, definitely then a stream is definitely suitable for a concurrency and parallelism as well. And definitely at last, when it comes to the transaction process, never mind and directly go to the stream. A stream is very, very, very suitable when it comes to the transaction processing. Then, Apache Kafka. So uh, when it comes to the Apache Kafka, as I told you that uh, the way we use to drive the message in Apache Kafka is that we use a common message bus which we use to communicate between the two endpoints. So one of the most astonishing feature of the Apache Kafka is its messaging. Then when it comes to the tracking means especially web tracking web activity tracking you can definitely blindly rely on apache kafka so apache kafka definitely gives you a better insights on web activity tracking then log aggregators you know uh, when you are working on any of the services the first thing you talk about the logs means you know, whenever you're just implementing any of the services any of your code it it might possible your language can be anything it may be java it may be kafka it may be java it may be scala it may be python or it may be c c plus plus the language can be anything the thing which is very common in all that they all generates the log so when it comes to the log aggregations you can definitely rely on the apache kafka stream processing means you know when you process the data when you enrich when you transform the data overall you are just processing your stream in a very 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 good manner then you can definitely rely on apache kafka then here comes the giant one which is the apache spark apache kafka is known to be stream processing but when it comes to the streaming of data means you don't need to about the scalability of data means you don't know what is the size and it may be different any of the time it may be uh, a even driven data it may be a watermark driven data you don't need to worry about it you can definitely fly on the apache kafka for the same so apache spark is very 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 known for its streaming data then again i discussed it a very earlier 
one of the most astonishing technology which is being growing exponentially and means you know giving a number of employments as i need to talk out is the machine learning and deep learning where you need to have massively large data sets in order to train your machine in order to machine let's learn something about the data and then give you some predictions as well apache spark is one of the best frameworks you could use for the same at last for computing means uh, it might be a new keyboard but in a very short it it is going to one of the best technology even growth even have means developed in the era of technology is for computing where we need to have massively large data sets large data sets means you have highly highly means data at very 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 high scale we definitely can use the apache spark so till now we have discovered about the data from where it comes from the various sources how can it be generated how can it be stored to databases the frameworks but it might be a bit complicated for now it means uh, it might be something let i don't know worry i don't need to worry about what the data framework is i need to talk about right now but yes i can bet you that any time when you are working on the data when you thought the data is being streamed and you need to get insights from the data when you are worrying that the data should be proper streamed when you think that yes you need to process and rich transform or load the data while well, it's get streamed you can definitely come to the session you can just go to the slides and i believe that you may get your answer so just wrap up this session by making a things a bit clear from starting means that it starts from the data yes again we are here so what we learned till now is if you talk about uh, three or four decades ago where we start generating the data where we store the data in some of our traditional databases like it may be just us uh, storing the data in, in the form of written text and registers but you thought no it's not the proper way to store the data means the traditional database is not a solution to store your data then you learn about the dvms as well where you have uh, three levels one of them is abstraction layer so you thought yes the dvms could be a better option to store the data because you know the data is being constantly exponentially growing from a number of devices so you thought yes the database could be a better option means that the dvms could be a better option to store the data where you can drain your queries your operations your job uh, just to get the data from the databases or you can analyze those data with the help of those queries so you have a number of databases with yourself so the data bases which you can use mysql it may be oracle it may be sql it may be postgres so just depends on the feature of the databases you can use any of the databases but the time the data grows more exponentially when you came to know about the fact when you're cognizant of the fact that the amount of data being generated has already crossed the limit means already crossed the number of the stars in the sky he was worrying about yes we need to think again because there are number of business where the storing the data in the databases and then uh, getting the insights from the databases what not was not a solution means you don't uh, you you can't wait for the data to get piles of into uh, some some databases some data where some data lakes as well and then you can just get the insights from the data it, it was not an option for some organizations so, so they thought that yes we need to have something we need to have some framework as well where uh, we can just process the data in the real time means you need to analyze the data in the real time you need to just think about the streaming of the data being processed and just you are just enriching transforming the data at that time you you are you are not even waiting for the data of the, or the piles of data to get stored somewhere else because you know before the data get stored it needs to travel from some network points at a time at a point of time as well so you can't wait so what do you think yes we have a number of frameworks you even the developer does did that and they just uh, developed some frameworks as well to just analyze the data just to uh, get insights the data when the data is in a streaming form so it might somehow a bit com complex for now that what is the what does that means the data is being getting streamed and you are just analyzing somehow it is some bit complicated for now but yes 
it is possible and there are a number of frameworks and i just described one of the most popular frameworks from them and you know when it comes to the implementation yes somehow in the starting it might possible that it could be a bit complicated for you to implement any of the frameworks for streaming the data for analyzing data in their streaming form so it might possible that uh, you feel some complexity as well but yes the time you worked on you will learn it yes this is very 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 interesting thing to work on so i discussed some solutions as well means uh, it may be the apache it may be the akka it may be the amazon or you know even uh, i came to know yesterday that even amazon is developing a new model for streaming data framework and even the scala is working on another one so you know there are a number of streaming frameworks which you can use any of the time but it's actually the point to be the means the point you need to think about the uh, facts you need to learn about that whatever the streaming frameworks you are using doesn't matter what matter actually it should meet your requirement it should meet your pillars means when it comes to pillar let me the pillar should be your security your safety also your cost optimization of your organization matters so you need to again think what type of framework you need which framework you need because you know nowadays it's not even it's just not possible to use any of the framework also you can use the integration of two at a time say for example if i need some of the property of the akka streams and some of the pro property of apache kafka then you may use the integration of same i believe there is uh, alpaca for the same where you can uh, integrate the libraries of apache kafka and akka streams at a time so these these might be some solutions to your problem but somehow it is possible that none of them could work for you then you have to think again then you have to integrate two or three libraries at a time in order to process your data or if when it comes uh, it may be possible that when it comes to the batch processing spark may fail because spark is giving a solution for all but it doesn't mean uh, when it comes to fighting you can use a missile just to kill a single man you need to think about the cost optimization as well because although apache spark is working on all the possible situations but yes apache spark needs a different server a different uh, computer to run a cluster on so you might be some cost effective when it comes to uh, choosing any of the framework so this is all about the today's session so i believe some concept will be clear for you in today's session uh, also the use cases where you, we what type of framework we can use at any time of point so this is all about the session and i welcome if anyone have any doubt please 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 i'm very open and i will try to answer you Thank you so much, Kuldeepak. So uh, we are running, I think, short of time. It's already uh, four fourteen. So uh, guys, uh, would it would be great help if you can share your feedbacks on uh, feedback form. We would love to hear you guys. And let's let's uh, you know uh, jump into the another session, which is after exactly a minute. So let's connect there. Thank you so much for joining in. And again, uh, Kuldeepak, this is, uh, you know, uh, very appreciable that you, the tone, uh, the delivery you carry, it's, it's uh, you know, amazing. It's wonderful the way you handle your audience. So I must, must appreciate. Apart from the, uh, you know, information you shared, the way you share your information, it's commendable. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And let's, let's join. Thanks for it. And I would really appreciate your feedback since it's very constructive for us. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Corporate, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Thanks, Thank, thank you, guys.